Skyrim and stop looking for a plan and stop looking for activities to actually hold me a bit more uh, in the game. So that's why I'm here. Alright, full arena. Alright, Red Angel. I'm uh, just your friendly Dutch neighbor. <laughs> uh, just interested about the whole topic, so not much to say. <laughs> uh, might, pick up, uh, might pick something up. Alright, alright. Some, some maybe too high expectations for tonight there, uh, or some of you. Uh, okay, so. Uh, yeah, I suppose I should give a brief introduction of myself as well. Uh, I'm really interested in leadership. Um, I view online gaming sort of as my own little uh, social uh, anthropology uh, research, you could call it. So I, I study leadership strategy, organization theory uh, at the university in my free time. I also run a business in real life. Um, I've been running gaming communities, developing them for over 20 years. Uh, I've been running FU for 13 years. Uh, I've been leading Planetside seven years. So I have uh, I have a fairly lengthy history in online gaming. Uh, I'm also engaged in various related projects as well. Um, so what we have tonight is a sort of a natural incremental development of what we've been doing in FU uh, since we've been running the community for a fair amount of time. It's not unheard of. There are many other communities who are over a decade old. So um, in that case, FU is nothing unique. But uh, I focus mainly on teaching leadership and uh, meta leadership, to be more specific, which is... Uh, it's leadership that's not related specifically to any game, so I'm not going to give you detailed information about how to play the game or how to lead a squad in Planetside or any other game. I'm talking more about uh, more abstraction in, in leadership and leadership that, that spans over longer periods of time. Now, we've been running many, many different types of leadership training in FU. Some are in-game, some are, as I said, meta uh, since Discord came around, uh, Discord is a new technology, essentially. Uh, obviously, everybody knew about chats before Discord. But the thing is that before Discord, we were kind of isolated communities. We Each community usually had a forum, maybe a web page, their own TeamSpeak or Mumble, whatever they had. And they would play separately together just building their community sometimes you'd have a, a skirmish against somebody in a game or maybe you had a drama argument on a forum that was essentially all the the connection you would have with other communities now along came the planet side suddenly you were always playing on the same servers the same faction with the same people and other communities the same communities so you you got much closer you had regular constant contact with the same sort of people and communities and then when discord came around it essentially at least for fu it substituted the forum entirely within a year all the communication went to discord and as everybody knows who use discord you're one click away from hopping onto any other community so we're essentially we're just one click away from each other so the connection now is not only are we in-game connected all the time, we're also off-game, we're connected all the time. So that had the effect that um, I was doing different leadership training, uh, discussions. It's not just me preaching about it. Uh, people from other outfits came along, joined in, shared ideas, etc. And it's been naturally progressing towards that. And my goal has always been just to collect people who are interested in leadership it's not 
about FU specifically. Uh, so the workshop is not about me preaching FU values or ethics. Uh, that's I'll share them gladly, but it's not that I'm here to change anybody's mind. Um, I'm just I just want to discuss ideas and see what sort of options we can find. <clears throat> So naturally, since we're very easily connected these days, more and more people start showing up. So my intention is to host a leadership workshop on a regular basis, maybe once a month. We'll see how it goes. That's going to be open to anybody, anybody who's interested from any game, any community. And we just get together. We talk about ideas, share, you know, problem solutions, whatever we, we might have. And uh, I have no idea where that can take us. As an example in FU, uh, if you have seen the document that we use to structure the community, um, that has had some spin-off projects. As an example, I'm working together with a school that uses partially some of the information to uh, teach leadership and to engage students. And that's together with other FU members as well. And then there are uh, other projects that are uh, into game designs as well. So you never know what, source, what sort of resources you find. Um, we expanded into ARMA. I don't play ARMA myself. Uh, it's not that I have anything against it, but um, the point is Leadership drives essentially everything in gaming, especially in uh, multiplayer gaming. And what we have in Planetside right now is almost unique. Um, there are other big MMO games, but MMO FPS games, I'm not really aware of any to the same scale. Now, Planetside is obviously old, and... Uh, it's going to be around for a few years at least, but it's not going to become the hot shit that it was back in 2013, which is already a long time ago. <clears throat> but there's definitely going to be similar games in the future. It's going to get bigger, it's going to change, and hopefully we'll find maybe new ideas and routes into the future as well. Now... Okay, so that's uh, that's me riffing and putting up a handful of stuff here. Has anybody got any questions or comments? I didn't ask for a platoon leader. <laughs> it's always silent when you do that. No questions here, man. All right. Well, so tonight, um, hopefully we can maybe work out some ideas for hosting the next uh, leadership workshop uh, but otherwise we'll uh, we'll look at we can start with the uh, FU document if you like if you don't have any other um, suggestions or requests to it we can look at that and we can talk about how we've solved different issues in FU Let me bring up the link. Oh, you can uh, you can do either one you like. I'm gonna put the link here. Hold on. No, no, it's the in the chat. If you can open that document. All right. Okay, so we'll uh, I'll I'll walk you guys through the FU document, and uh, you'll see kind of our thinking and where we where we've been working from, and how how it's kind of worked out for us. Uh, again, I want to stress I'm not here to preach the FU way or try to to you know say that this is. This is the way to do it. This is the best way to do it. That's that's not the point. Uh, 
every outfit has their own niche solutions which bring their own results and uh, we can we can reflect we'll, we'll use fu as the um, the fixed point from where we can uh, reflect and discuss different approaches okay so uh, we can skip the forward of the document you can scroll down uh, the, uh, the history is not really relevant for this part important to understand if you don't know anything about fu is that fu is uh, you should look at it as a gaming organization this is not an outfit fu is it's uh, an old community that plays many different games uh, and projects that are not specifically games but related to it as i mentioned earlier so it's a, it's a network of people with similar interests working on projects together. Some of them are more professional in nature and some of them are purely uh, for entertainment. So the, the community, the meta community, that's the whole organization. That's everybody in here. So some of the people in FU, I simply don't know because it's over 500 people in it. Uh, but more or less we all share the value structure and that's sort of the thing that keeps the community together over many different games and over a long span of time and many different leaders as well uh, to mention in planet side i think our outfit has had probably five generations of leaders that means uh, the first maybe one on two two first years let's say that we had one set of leaders who were running the outfit they got more or less burned out or real life or whatever came and they've left the game since and then we had another generation of leader and another one and another one so we managed to sustain the outfit over seven years through cycling through many many leaders uh, obviously People like myself and a few others have been around for the whole duration of this, but uh, I haven't really actively played Planetside since 2016. I play nowadays maybe about once, twice a month, but it's still active, it's still rolling. So uh, we can talk specifically about that more in detail. Uh, there's a ship of thesis paradox that explains sort of the the. Uh, abstract idea behind meta leadership okay before we continue with in-game meta structures which is sort of the meat around our playstyle in the game is there any questions or comments go on Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, th I think many of us who have, who have been leading for for a long time in game uh, knows knows about this uh, 
momentum issue. Uh, you can, uh, if you you can almost immediately spot an inexperienced leader. Uh, he usually doesn't have the next move planned. So when you're at the fight and the fight ends, then they start planning where to go next and what's supposed to happen. And then there's usually a silent time going around there and, you know. So absolutely, yeah. M momentum is very important. Uh, anyone else? Anything? Yes. Uh, okay. Let's let's talk about the uh, the formations. Uh, but we'll start specifically with the formation, even though the campaign concepts comes first in the, in the order in those chapters. But the document is written in no particular uh, order of importance. It's just uh, topics I wrote down and then just you know mash them into some sort of structure. So if you is known on Miller for using formations. Now we haven't always used formation. Uh, we started using them sometime in 2015, I think, which is a whole story, uh, background story into that. And I was actually playing together with cons at that time. And I sort of not got the idea from cons, but I developed the idea back then. Anyways, so I, I have fond memories from, from uh, playing partially together with cons. I had run an NC outfit at that time, plus a few. Anyways, um, so formations is not effective when you're talking about winning alerts, or winning bases. I mean, there's there are these geniuses always on command that complains, you know, oh, we're not taking a base, we're losing the alert because you're doing a formation, you're not capturing a base. Yes, obviously 100% true. So they're not effective for the actual alert but that's not the point so the the history why i started using formation i guess i have to go into the whole thing about playing on nc so if you was doing a lot of competitive gameplay a lot of scrims back in 2015 so they were essentially exclusively focusing on that sort of gameplay but I'm not really interested in competitive gameplay because that gets very, very specific and narrow. And I, I like to explore broader perspectives. Plus, I really want to work on expanding the community and building it sort of as a virtual company, essentially. So I, I'm, I'm looking into to running public and uh, training up new talents and bringing those into the group, enabling players to pursue whatever talents and resources, visions they have. Now, I created an outfit on the NC side at that time when FU was doing a lot of uh, competitive gameplay. Now, the, uh, the NC outfit was very casual. I was recruiting a lot of players. It was a different time then. I had like 200 people join it in one weekend when I was running a few platoons. You don't see that today, but back then it was perfectly doable. Now, you can't get a good quality outfit in a weekend by recruiting 200 players. It's going to be chaos. You get all sort of people into it. So I was desperately trying to sort of get that outfit into balance. And the way I tried to do it was to host in-game training sessions. Now, what I noticed is people will either be interested in doing it or not interested in doing it. But they will still sort of attend the training. They will come to the location where you host the training, but they will run around, they won't really listen, they will make a lot of extra noise and you know be distracting. So what I would do during those training sessions is I'd have people st stand in a line so I could speak to them, sort of face to face in the game. And uh, all of the people who were running around 
I just had removed. I was very strict. This was an experimental outfit, so I, I would only focus on training people who would, you know, have the patience and respect to stand in line. Now that turned out to be very, very effective for just running the outfit. Now, long story short, uh, if you stagnated the TR outfit, stagnated completely because they were focusing on scrims. Recruitment stagnated, you can read about it later in the document. So I came back to FU to revitalize it, get the public platooners going and, you know, bring it back to, to uh, the former glory, so to speak. Which meant I had to shut down the NC outfit. But what I did was, okay, now I came back to the FU outfit, had already been running for a few years in Planet Side. Uh, I had some veteran members already in, in the outfit, so I started using formations, not during normal training. I didn't host trainings at all. Instead, when we were running a public platoon, I would first talk to the veteran squad leaders I had. I would tell them, you know, you need to stand in this specific position at the warp gate when we start the gameplay and you have your whole squad line up after you all right it doesn't have to be a perfect line but if they're running around shooting throwing grenades whatever just remove them from your squad uh, we did this it was quite painful to begin with not everybody agreed with it not everybody saw the benefit of it but we really stuck with this we did it for a while and the thing is, when you have this sort of a filter, then you get people who have the patience and the mindset to give a little bit extra of their time to organize the platoon before you go into the fight, which means that the fight will be more organized <clears throat> and you will also recruit the right sort of people, which makes the outfit, running the outfit is easier. You, you get people who sort of naturally understands that they need to be a slightly more disciplined, they need to listen, they need to cooperate and, you know, attend whatever you're doing. So you, you wouldn't run into this problem that you'd have, let's say you have enthusiastic players joining the platoon and they join your outfit, but they sort of, they don't really fit the culture you have. It's difficult to handle them. They usually just, you know, the retention is low when you when you do that. So we built in this subtle filter, but it's also a training behavior into normal public platoons. Now it's it's aesthetic. It looks nice when you have four squads standing in line. It looks very nice. So this is sort of an enforcing, mental enforcing into your uh, your outfit that you, you are in this structured and this is how you play. So it becomes, uh, let's, uh, an example I can give is after four or five weeks of doing this, people would start standing in formation by default at the warp gate without us requesting it. So that's when we noticed that the formation culture had established itself in the outfit. It was a default behavior that players would manifest without us ordering it to them. And after that, it was very easy to maintain it. We never had to really enforce it after that because uh, if we would get maybe one or two guys joining when we ran a platoon for a night, we'd have 15, 20 people in FU who were doing this by default. So it was a natural process that we had established. Uh, it's very difficult to establish these sort of artificial behaviors in a community, but we had managed to do that. Uh, after a while, we noticed that formation behaviors came with a lot of perks to the outfit. One of them is 
it's aesthetic and that means that players see this when they're at the wolf gate players who are not part of the platoon or the outfit they see that something is going on and they want to be involved in organized gameplay so now it automatically recruits for us not just in the platoon but also externally secondly uh, it really really reduces stress on leaders because now you get uh, a reset button you're not stuck fighting for hours outside out in the continent somewhere now you can get back to the warp gate you have your squad assembled you have a small break you select kits you get back into the transport and you move out it's easier for the platoon leader as well because now he sees that there's actually all of these players following the orders and, and relating to the platoon. <clears throat> so it has a great morale boost to platoon leaders. So on top of this, we then built the campaign concept. The, the campaign concept is very simple. Uh, if you play any other FPS games, multiplayer games, um, Call of Duty, I guess. I haven't played that, but I, I played Battlefield 2. Um, you would play on a server, 32 players versus 32 players, and the round would end after you've captured enough flags or whatever point system was applied. And when the round ends, all the toys go back into the box, it resets. Now, in planet side you don't have this it's a 24 7 battle going all the time and the complaints that leaders would give me when they say they're getting burned out or they don't want to lead the reason for it is not always but it's it's common the reason they gave is if i accept squad leading or platoon leading <coughs> i will be stuck with it for the entire night and uh, the guys will automatically promote me to squad platoon leader the next time I log on. <coughs> so it was sort of like the play. Once you are marked by the, the leadership uh, hand, you're stuck with it. And, you know, very few of us want to lead every single time we're online. <coughs> so the, the ca campaign thing uh, is our way to simulate around ending so we do the formation we we go out we fight a few bases maybe we get overrun maybe the fight dies down or maybe we just get tired whatever the reason is <clears throat> once we get back to the warp gate after maybe two three four five six fights everybody's free to step down <clears throat> we check with the squad leaders hey do you want to lead for the next campaign if they don't, we cycle leaders. Same with platoon leader. If he feels tired, he can cycle out. So now you have a structured and legit reason to quantify your leadership. And everybody understands it and respects it. So that's that's the whole simple thing about it. It's, it's simply a psychological structure. Uh, and it's it's easy when uh, when you're kind of you're on the fence you you, you can't lead you know you want to keep the platoon going uh, but you you really don't want to lead that long you say okay I'll I'll lead for one campaign well, that's fine you have quantified your leadership and you can step down after that and that's something that we've found to be very useful in a few to uh, reduce burnouts and stress for leaders and also to 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 significantly lower the threshold for new leaders to try it out you know people say you know i haven't led before i don't know really what to do but you know just lead one campaign and then you can go so they try it out it's it's quantified leadership and they they're off the hook any uh any questions or comments? No, I'm just going to agree with you. Uh, yesterday I had my first time actually squad leading. I quite enjoyed it. 
That's very good. <coughs> yeah, the, the campaign duration is uh, is not set. It can be one fight, it can be two fights, it can be an entire alert. Usually, uh, if we get completely overrun, or we we uh, end up ghost capping, or the leader, platoon leader, or somebody gets tired, we just go back to warp gate. Whenever it's sort of convenient, we go back to warp gate and reset. Well, I can give you some metrics for it. Um, if you is uh, is an old outfit, been around for seven years now. Um, we have the average outfit. We, we have a uh, a uh, an automated spreadsheet that collects stats regarding leadership specifically, and we can compare other outfits with it. So we we do research and and uh, check out different outfits. The, the average uh, percentage of leaders in an outfit is around 5%. So 5% of the outfit population is usually uh, active within leadership. The way we define leadership in this spreadsheet is, uh, if I remember correctly, you need to have 250 squad leader ribbons and 50 platoon leader ribbons, so something along those lines, yes. So it's very low. It's the threshold is very low for leadership. Uh, I think we estimate that fifty platoon leader ribbons means you would be leading a, a full platoon for about five hours in total. And squad leadership, I suppose, it's something along the same lines: uh, ten leadership ribbons per hour for a squad. So 25 hours, maybe. And it's uh, since we've done the statistic of our entire outfit, it's automated and we can see, we, we know which one has been, you know, fairly active as leaders. Not the, the most active ones, but, you know, people who step up now and then and we look what, what are the ribbon count and, you know, the, the average number is about 250 slash 50. So with, with that said uh if you has about uh, let's see i don't have a few up right now uh, if i remember correctly we have about 18 percent of our outfits population is leadership uh, are engaged in leadership so uh, 200 members approximately plus minus a few uh, that will be 30 i think 37 members are currently noted as either currently active or have been active in leadership. So that's over three times the average of other outfits on average. Now I can look at, let's see, uh, B. Wei, Bushido Wei. Yeah, you know have. All right, uh, I see two guys listed, so you have 2% leadership in it, according to the spreadsheet. Uh, defensive shades and dubis fluids. And uh, defensive shades uh, has been leading for 8,000 squad leader ribbons and 3,000 platoon leader ribbons. Okay, it's gonna take a while for it to load up the stats, but it's uh, it's coming. Absolutely, absolutely. That is, uh, for me personally, it's always been very important that I'm not uh, particularly in the spotlight. A lot of people who uh, engage with FU 
through the game or through Discord or whatever. Uh, <laughs> the funny thing is that they they often think that somebody else is the leader of FU. Uh, it's usually Sen or um, Gisburn or, or somebody else because they're more active in game. They're more they, they're the informal leaders of the outfit. So that's uh, it's always fun to see that that even though I'm sort of the spider in the web of the community, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not suffocating the the room for the other guys to to step up and to claim their place. All right, so uh, B A W C. It's still loading a bit. Uh, I'll have it in a minute or so. Now, uh, while we wait, uh, I'll, I'll just say this about the way we we, uh, we run it in FU. Even if you start using formations now, uh, you're not going to reach up to 18% uh, of your outfit being leaders. This will take time to develop. And that's the... I think that's one of the most important insights you need to have if you're going to deal with meta leadership, which is, is more how you run the organization, uh, how you apply these sort of psychological mechanisms to uh, help reduce stress, help people uh, uh, engage more uh, in leadership and how to, without using too many uh, artificial uh, filters how you get the right sort of people joining you uh, it's going to take time to develop leadership and you need to have a certain degree of faith in uh, in the meta structures you're using especially if you're going to use um, if you're going to use the FU model it's going to take you I would say at least one or two years before it really starts to show up. These are long-term uh, mechanisms that, that won't be easily uh, visible. But they will, at least for us, they've been very, very uh, good. Uh, yes, per, and, and other... Thank you. 
everybody in the squad can be safe. We have fuse or just what about ours or what we have to do there. I don't I don't know what about but anything in new things it I mean that's the small vision. It's more as possible to say what do we want to do with joint ops, do we have to start formal ops or do we have a joint ops with another ops there or something like that. And uh, and talking about of course That's that's a good point. That's a good point, yeah. And so we, we forced people to do that and it took like what a week? Uh, up to just a week. We saw a huge change from people in the and they were when we start playing up they were far more concentrated, focused on the game. Okay, so now it's nine PM and now after the briefing we start playing we have our first meeting with our team of galaxy, whatever. And in that time everybody hours we have to focus our gameplay and stuff like that and play the best we can and other uh, other than that is more, of course more casual and stuff like that and what I mean is I don't think to implement formations will make that much time to be, to be effective really to make the change and to Absolutely fair enough. Uh, yeah, go on. Dubnus, did you want to say something?
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, I've, I've took some notes here. Uh, anybody else who wants to to say something? This is a discussion, not not a uh, not intended to be a lecture by me or any, anybody else. Especially if you um, if you're not used to leading or have a leadership experience, uh, of leadership experience, uh, there might be a lot of things here to take in at once. Um, okay, so if if nobody else wants a word, I'll uh, I'll put in some of the the notes I took from what Jeff was saying. No, write it in. So uh, what I really liked what Jeff pointed out here is um, group enforcement. So what he said is when they had the formations and uh, they had a briefing or debriefing, uh, they would notice if somebody was shooting or making noise or, you know, whatever, not paying attention. It wasn't the leader who was shouting out and disciplining, disciplining the individual. It's uh, the whole group reacts to it. And that is very true uh, for FU as well. Now, we apply formations for public platoons. So uh, that is uh, the main difference here. We're not just for internal ops. And we are obviously much larger than uh, than RS was. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that uh, th that's the, also the beauty of the formations. Because it, it can be really... Uh, draining on your energy as a leader if you have to chase after people if you have to complain at them you know why are you doing this why not following etc if you establish the formation culture and the mindset um, everybody who joins and who who likes this culture they do the formation and it's instantly an insult to everybody in the platoon, not just towards the platoon leader, but to everybody, not just the squad leaders, but to everybody who is in the platoon. So it naturally becomes uh, an incentive to, on grassroots level, to enforce the discipline in the group. So uh, you will have increasingly less dissonance once you have established this kind of behavior at least that's how we uh, saw it in a few so um, essentially uh, if I see people mucking about when we do a formation I don't really pay that much attention as a platoon leader I don't really go after them too much I focus mainly on giving out the instructions you know get information clean out your squads Balance the kits, Galaxy per squad, and board the galaxy. And then we go off. And it usually, inside the squads, uh, they will just either tell this person to, you know, stop fooling around and, you know, follow or, or leave to join some other group. So it, it, the, that discipline or that mindset is naturally delegated into the player base and doesn't have to be from the top anymore uh, yeah go on So these um, 
this group enforcement phenomenon is not immediately apparent when you use formations. So that's not the first thing that people really think about when they see it. A lot of people just think uh, it's a waste of time and uh, what are these nerds doing here role-playing some unnecessary formations. And In fact, it has nothing to do with role-playing. We're not a Milsim outfit. How many active SU members do you have in the group? Is it like half SU members, half practice? Uh, so if you go to those uh, line formations, it really helps if you have a little people down. Just do it. If you have like a big caboose where you mostly have bullies and everyone's using an outfit, it can get a bit hard with all those formations. Yes, you're right about that. Uh, on an average night, we have about, uh, I think it's 20 members online, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, during uh, the, the weekly drills on Wednesday, we run drills. So yesterday, I think we had closer to 30 members. Um, as I s early previously said, when we started using formation, it is quite tough to begin with. You need to have squad leaders who understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you have to you have to filter through a lot in the beginning. It might be best to just start off with maybe two squads or however many players you have in your outfit. And then sort of filter out and after a half an hour or an hour, depending on how many players you get to your squads and how, how often you do the, the, the regroups to the walk gate. It is surprisingly effective. Uh, you can even get a uh, completely random squad, I mean, full of public players. As long as you have a squad leader in it, he doesn't have to be even from, from your outfit. Yeah, as long as he agrees to follow the instructions, you can get them to to, to function in this. It's, uh, it's very easy to transfer it to uh, new players. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's the... Uh, Absolutely. You guys are 100% right about that. I mean, the formations, they're not effective for the gameplay. They're, uh, they are a uh, meta concept for shaping how you develop the, the outfit over a longer time. Uh, I would say that 80 to 90% of the redeployments we do in FU is either directly to 
Sunderer's galaxies or to a different base. So it's not like we every time go back to the walk gate. Yeah, 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 that would <laughs> that would completely break the momentum in the fight. So as I said, we play a campaign. The campaign might be however many bases, and that usually means that we are regrouping a few times to different vehicles or positions to do that. But yeah, you have to you have to consider: Are you running a smaller outfit? Is it just outfit only, or are you running public? Now, here's here's a good segue into the next point, which I also made a note about uh, what Chef Chefke was saying. Uh, RS was a fairly small outfit. Now, there's there's an inherent problem with having small outfits, and that's pretty obvious. It's uh, you won't have enough players to run the daily squad so there won't be enough leaders to go around to run the daily squads over a longer period of time uh, usually smaller outfits when they form they're very enthusiastic for the first few months but then uh, the the reality of of fatigue or you can call it uh, erosion or, or whatever entropy you want to call it it will set in. You will have this. This this is sort of a universal phenomenon to almost every organization. Is that the 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 momentum slows down, the novelty value slows down for the the activity. So uh, once you don't have enough players to run the squads, or you don't have enough leaders to host the squads, then that cascades into fostering more inactivity in the outfit and your recruitment. If it if you have recruitment to begin with, that will certainly stagnate. So there is a critical critical balance between running sufficient amount of public to just keep the momentum going, not by natural pressure, not by having campaigns where you really play just to recruit. Uh, so there, that's the small team problem. Uh, there's another related problem to this that we've experienced with FU, and that's we've tried to have this these tactical groups, tactical outfits that have splintered from FU, not because of arguments, but because of just different playstyle interests. Um, they have all failed simply because it's it's exciting for a short while but then you don't have enough people for running that elite squad or or you don't have those leaders and then you know the players start drifting back to the original outfit or to different outfits and and you know the leaders usually get frustrated or or just become apathic to it we also tried that with vehicle outfit which failed you don't really see any vehicle specific outfits around in the game uh, maybe cabo i'm not sure if they're around so the, the the problem is not that people don't like to play with vehicles they they certainly like to play with tanks i prefer to to run with tanks now and then but uh, running a tank outfit or a vehicle outfit is uh, it's not going to happen really unless you're extremely specific and devoted and the reason is you're not gonna have enough players to run regular squads you're not gonna recruit enough players for that specific playstyle and the leadership won't be uh, sufficient uh, what we have solved or the way we have solved it in FU is uh, you can see on TeamSpeak here now there are some of us have lightning tokens to our profiles uh, Madhawk has two lightning pro uh, lightning tokens uh, this is called the fur group it's FU rapid response and it's a Valkyrie based strike force they do uh, surgical strikes on on secondary targets in fights tank columns Sunderers you know whatever uh, so it's a uh, it's a uh, exactly exactly so so um, if you run an outfit based purely on that it's not going to function because you won't have enough resources for the daily grind but if we allow for them to create 
a sub outfit within the outfit so they can train people can be a fu can be from outside of a few doesn't matter they can train people in this play style they train their own leaders in this play style and they host their own events in this play style usually once a week maybe more and they will have enough players to run it the days they don't have enough players or enough leaders there's the the rest of the outfit doing something playing infantry playing with tanks whatever so it retains the players so that was a small spin-off to the discussion I suppose but uh, if you guys want to expand into it, that's how we solved it uh, go on That's a sad turn of event. Um, regarding, uh, I took, took a note also on the service ethos. Um, yeah, there's a difference between being a leader and being a manager. Um, so a manager has you know specific tasks and he has pe people under him that he he wants them to do specific tasks etc so he 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 kind of has authority over people while from my perspective at least a leader can be anyone in the outfit or in any position and that's somebody who provides a service to the group he either he pulls a galaxy i mean it's not the traditional view we have of a leader but he takes an initiative he provides something to the group a service so it's a form of leadership to pull a galaxy to pull a sunday to pull a max suit or a, an engineer or a medic when requested so initiative is one of the fundamental building blocks in leadership in my opinion That's a good question. Now, I don't really like uh, having reward systems, but I'm sure there are somebody here who has suggestions. Go on. I do. Oh, go on. No, go on. Go on. <laughs> Stu, go on. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I would say that uh, in these few days that I've been here, you've already done that. Like, there, there was that incident yesterday when uh, there was no leader for the Delta Squad and uh, since I was speaking in the mic I tried to do leadership but I was very, really overwhelmed well, naming me in a few times in these days was just enough of a reward like I did something and people were talking about it so this is already a great reward I lead it in the, in the other games Arma, give us two uh, battlefield and uh, every time uh, I took the leadership, it was uh, not because I needed a reward, and uh, I never expected it. It was just uh, something I felt it was good for me at that point uh, to do. So don't get crazy people who give uh, anything to the leaders, but what you're doing already, so naming them out, uh, uh, mentioning sometimes in the Discord, that's already something great.
Yeah, absolutely. Um, This is a it's a good topic. Uh, thank you for bringing this up as well. It was a very good question. Uh, as we see here, it's uh, it's quite a broad topic. I mean, there's no single answer. I think here, the the way I uh, I would personally view this is um, I'm very wary of of incentives, rewards, because. Uh, it, uh, th there's a chance that you will get people chasing after incentives just for that sake that they're in for the wrong reasons and since leadership is sort of a service it's kind of kind of like an altruistic endeavor you're giving away for for the benefit of others but obviously you're giving getting something out of it yourself um, so we avoid ranks or giving any sort of status to, to people because they lead but uh, uh, we want to show appreciation and recognition so uh, this is something I haven't really mentioned in a long time during leadership training I suppose I forgot it but it's still present 
uh, in normal gameplay. Uh, thank the leader, always. When they sign off, if it's a squad leader or a platoon leader says, you know, I'm going to step down, I'm heading off, you know, say, you know, thank you for your leadership. You know, thank you. Or it's just simple stuff. Uh, when we run a training module, uh, we, we announce after it's done, we announce in the community who did the, the modules, who have completed it, and we thank them for attending. So there's an appreciation aspect. Now, this doesn't give you any power or points or medals or anything but it grows your sort of your s social fabric to the community if, if you understand what i mean yeah. I mean, well true 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 i mean yeah yeah obviously but uh hopefully in a you know not so uh, corruptive way Absolutely.
That's oh, fun. I'll, I'll I'll play uh, the devil's advocate in this this part. I, I would say um, it's it depends on how strict you want to be with the discipline. Obviously, this is creating a contentious situation, both with the player who don't want to accept it and also the leadership who feel that the player is not respecting them. Uh, it is kind of you're you're putting the uh, uh, well, I have to consider what, what word is correct no, it's not tyranny of leadership but it's sort of the uh, the authority of the leadership you're putting it before the uh, the uh, sort of rational decisions that the player would take otherwise Um, I, th I think, well, me personally now, we've been uh, one and a half hour at this uh, discussion, so I'm, I'm getting a bit mushy in my head to to uh, really keep keep track on it. Maybe it's because I have small kids as well. Uh, I'll, I'll make one point that I that I wrote down here. That was, uh, I think it was uh, Dubnus that mentioned it. Um, uh, the, all the squad leaders are equal, the platoon leader is equal. And that's how how you guys structure it and we have quite similar in fu there's a small detail uh, to to fu that you didn't mention you you had specifically uh, the squad leaders can at any time override the platoon leader at the base uh, 
uh, if the platoon leader tells the squad to go to A, but the squad leader tells his squad to go to B, the whole squad needs to go to B. There's no repercussions to that, so it's uh, the, the squad leader is considered the tactical lead, his eyes on the ground, he knows what's best for the situation, while the platoon leader is the strategic lead, he, he has a more a broader view of the fight. The squad leader cannot go to a different base, he needs to be at the assigned base, but he can specifically choose his targets and play styles at the base, and that's uh, the FU ethos. So there's Sometimes the squad leaders are stronger in authority than the platoon leader, and then in some cases vice versa. Yeah, it's, um, it's about the initiative and integrity of the people leading the squads. Uh, that's the whole the, the foundation that it's built on. I'd, I'd say regarding uh, regarding the uh, going for uh, fights, it's uh, I would a hundred percent agree with uh, Dubnus that it's it's going for the good fights. It's, uh, that's the only thing that really matters. You can win an alert by throwing people in the meat grinder and having a bad time during the entire alert, but you win it and you'll have significantly less players logging in the next day. You, you essentially exhaust the outfit or the enthusiasm for the game unless you constantly keep recruiting. That's essentially how the big Sergi outfits work. They just recruit and recruit and recruit and they just push and throw people into meat grinders. They lose a lot of people, but they also sort of recruit to replenish the losses. Now, uh, you, you can... I've played many alerts or many evenings when we've been completely outpopped and we've been, we've been essentially doing skirmishes in the terrain in between bases as we are constantly losing bases, but we can have a fantastic time doing it since we're challenging ourselves and uh, we're taking on the enemy in appropriate bits. So um, I would completely agree with that. Um, Any other questions or comments regarding this?
Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. As I as I wanted to point out early on, a few solution is by no means universal. It's just the way we solve it, and it's uh, it's great that we uh, we got these different outfits. That way, we were not stuck in this group thing where we all agree and approach it the same way. Um, was there more? Uh, I'd uh, sort of like to gently start wrapping up for tonight. Uh, let's see, I had some small notes here. Uh, no, actually, I think, I think I'm pretty good. We've gone through a lot of stuff and details here, mainly very specific for Planetside and uh, the, the way you play the game. I was hoping to get more into abstract theories regarding it but that's completely fine uh, as i said uh, i hope if people are interested i will host these workshops and discussions again maybe next month uh, Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and, and and if for the next um, workshop that we or discussion, whatever we want to call it, uh, um, if you have specific topics, you have any documents or anything, just feel free to bring it. You can you can notify me first, and I'll I'll sort of schedule it in. Uh, and uh, this is not a private. Uh, event that's based on my network of friends so if if you have any other leaders that you think might be interested in this then by all means please invite them because uh, i would really like to further establish a network of, uh, of leaders people who are interested in leadership you don't have to lead a community you can just be you know just interested in the topics <laughs> because uh I've been building communities now for over 20 years and I probably will continue to build them for 20 more years or however long I can be online. So there's going to be new games, new interesting games, bigger games. And there's always going to be uh, an appetite for good leadership. So I hope to establish this sort of um, meta network together with the people who share it so consider yourselves invited if you're interested thank you a lot sure sure yeah um, let's wrap it up for tonight um, i have i've recorded the the discussions tonight i will not publish it anywhere if somebody feels uncomfortable with that i just let me know it's mainly for just taking notes so that stuff is not just spoken and forgotten. Uh, if somebody really feels uncomfortable with it, I, I can delete the file. It's no problem with that. I'm fine with that too, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like to have it. Yeah, sure. I've, I've recorded other leadership discussions as well. Uh, the I've... I've for <laughs> for the longest time i've been intending to uh, create a podcast version of the document and the current document i'm writing so we we go into bits and pieces and have people from different outfits or, or communities you know discussing uh, ideas and you know going really into uh, the nerdy stuff about leadership because you have enough of these hey guys let's jump right into it and they review some weapon or whatever and I find that to be very boring personally I have an off topic question sure what's the average time
this game, I would take it as a team as well. I also heard that, um, for example, your medic crew would uh, account for survival. If you have that, you can take account for survival. Yeah, so okay, wow. so basically, medic maining medic is. Okay. Alright, yeah, no worries. Thank you for attending. It was it was great having this many people here. I'm <laughs> I'm actually slightly amazed. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll stick around if anybody wants to have a chat after this. I'll stick around. Don't worry. Oh, one one thing, one thing bef for those who are still here, uh, and interesting in, in more uh, stuff. There's a link. It's to uh, the Ship of Theseus paradox. It's I'm currently writing the the manual we looked at tonight. Uh, is old. It's from 2016. I'm currently writing and studying for for a better one. Uh, it's in the making it's going to take some time to do it but this is a um, a part of it in the introduction section so if you are interested in uh, explaining the meta idea behind leadership this is uh, I think a good example I'm gonna have a uh, Two, three minutes break. I'll be back soon. I, I don't want to 